Hello, this is Todd with All Things Archery, and thank you for coming to my channel today. Today we're going to be swapping out this original factory rest on this. This is an October Mountain takedown recurve bow, and it comes with this factory flimsy little rest right here, as you can see, which I don't like. If you see that, it's a little... Okay, so we're going to be removing this rest and replacing it with traditional bear hair rest. I prefer a bear hair rest. I prefer shooting off the shelf on these recurves. Things you're going to need to do that with, you're going to need a bow square. Okay. You're also going to need knock pliers. You're going to need your bowstring, of course. You're also going to need a couple of knocks. You're also going to need a couple of knocks right there. Okay. And then after we get this installed, we're going to be installing these silencer these limb silencers onto our bow these are a simple install and they work really good so these will be our next on after we finish getting this bear we're going to be installing these limb silencers okay now the first thing you want to do when you do this is you want to remove this completely this this old rest the way i found removing this old rest without damaging your finish is if you can take a piece of hard cardboard like this you can actually sometimes slide that in and get enough in there like by just now just cutting it, it doesn't damage you. Get your finger in there and you can slowly, <clears throat> and it comes right off. See, that's a sticker rest, comes right off. Now, the problem with that, though, it leaves this residue right here. As you see this residue here, this residue's got to be removed if we put your new hair rest on all around this. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use denatured alcohol for that. I like denatured alcohol because it seems to, it's a great cleaning agent. Okay, what I like to use on cleaning, cleaning this stuff like this up is, is um, denatured alcohol. The reason I use denatured alcohol is because it's a great solvent. It also does as my torch cleaner and my torch fuel. But this thing here doesn't really damage your finish. But as always, when you put anything on your bow, put a small area, put a little bit on a cloth. This is fine. Find a small area, not conspicuous on your bow, and rub it in there and see if it's going to change, if it's going to take any of the finish off. Rub it in. And then wait a few seconds and see if the finish gets removed or not. I really have found nothing that will damage except maybe um, wood arrows with the shellac on them. But use something like this, it doesn't hurt it. You can see it didn't, didn't harm the finish. So it's safe to use on removing this. And it's just a matter of coming through here and cleaning that right off. See if that cleans off there? All that residue comes right off really easily. Okay. Just like that. You want your surface perfectly clean and dry when you do this because you don't want any any residue left on your from your old rest. Otherwise, your bare hair rest won't stick properly. So you want to clean everything really good. Okay. Doesn't take a lot, but you want to get it really nice and clean. Okay. There. See that? All that residue is gone. Came off really quick. No issues. All right. Now. So may or may not need a set of scissors. We'll put those here in case. I'm not sure we're going to need them, but we'll try. So this is the Bear Hair Rest. It's made by This one's made by Bear Archery, but you can get them from any other manufacturer. They're great little systems. And it's really a simple install. You come with a rubber back padding, which you install last, not first. Keep that in mind. And you have your Bear Hair Rest, which is here. This is what goes on first. Now what I do is I take this. You're going to need a pencil or a pen or something. Now you want to lay this rest right on here like this. Okay, you want to, I always flush it with the front, okay, not the back, because I'm going to cut the back off. And then I take my marking instrument, whatever it may be, and I come across and I mark it just like that. You see that? You want to start down, you want to Leave it hang off the side, flush it with the front, flush it with the front of the, of the rest, and just mark it like this. I don't use a marker for this because it, it will leave a mark finish on, but use a pen or a pencil, it doesn't leave any, any marks on your riser. And there you get a perfectly good mark around that now. What that does, it doesn't leave any marks, but it scores it. As you can see, it'll score it. And I take a black marker after it's scored, and then I trace the score mark on my black marker, give me something to cut on. Like that. See? Now it's going, you can see with the score marks there, that I take a black marker and I add to the score marks and I know exactly where to cut at. 
So now I take my scissors and just basically follow the lines. Just like I'm doing here is cut around it. Okay, that's done now. Okay. Now you got all this furry stuff on the edge here, so what I like to do with that. It's kind of important, okay? If you don't heat these edges up, it'll fray on you and cause problems. I use a little torch and I just run it right across just like that real quick. All that's going to do is singe all the hairs on that so that it, doesn't, it won't fray on you, okay? See that? All you need is just a little bit. Take your hand and rub across it and it takes all the excess off. That way it won't fray on you when you go to use it. See that? Nice that came out. Look at that. Perfect. See? And I'll put it back on there and test fit it again onto my thing and make sure I don't need more cuts on it which just looks pretty good as it is. Got a little bit right here along this edge I need to trim off just a little bit more. Not much, it's a little bit more. Okay, just a very, very little bit trim there. See that? So I'll just take this and I'll just go back over that real quick. Just like that, a little bit of a trim. Perfect, okay? And then I wanna reheat that again so that it doesn't freaking fray on me. Okay, and take your hand, and just run your hand across, that's all you gotta do, okay? Just like that. Okay, now, I take it, I'll wipe it down one more time with my denatured alcohol, just so I get a good stick on it. Okay, see that there? Give it about five minutes or so to dry really good. I'm gonna show you another trick too, I always use, I put these on bare hair wrists on. So instead of using the sticky on the back, I pull the sticky part off, including the um, sticky. This part never sticks. Once it gets wet, it peels right off. And instead, I'm going to replace this with some double stick clear tape made by Gorilla. This stuff is great. works awesome. And it'll hold it. It's also waterproof. also hold it forever. So I just stick that on here like this. Okay. And then I trim it off. All right. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to trim around that, that tape there. See, I got that sticky tape on the back of that bare hair rest. Now I'm going to trim this off along following the, the skirts of the bare hair rest. This tape holds up much better than what comes with it. It's waterproof, not affected by rain or moisture. Probably these bare hair rests, they get really wet or, or damp. They'll sometimes come off your off your riser because the glue they use to hold it on with is not very good. But if you insert this Gorilla Tape on there, double sticky Gorilla Tape, this thing will never come off. I mean, never. Okay, it's good stuff, okay? So, now that that's done, we've got our, we'll put this back on our wrist and check it for a fit, everything looks good. All right, now we just peel this tape off here. I like to make sure it's really pressed on there good. Then I peel the tape off. There you go. It takes a little bit of work in it, but once you get it all worked off, it comes off, and you can go ahead and stick this on there. Now what I do is I want to go ahead and put this onto this rest as tight as I can. Again, I'll start from the front, work my way to the back. Get a nice, just get it test fit on there nice and tight, and then I'll press it all the way down, okay? Just like that, okay? Perfect, see that? And now we'll take this piece here, which is the pad that goes right on here. We'll put this on and get it done. Okay. This pad here sticks right to the edge of this. So I put it right. I lined up with the edge, almost almost with the edge of that, as you can see. This thing do it this way for you better. You can see it better. There you go. I put it over that bumper spot there because I'm not going to use that. And I slide this in there just like that, okay? And put it on just like that, okay? It gives some place for the arrow to slide across. All right. Now that's the bare hair installed. Now we have to readjust our string and our bow for it to fit our knock point and check it, and make sure it's right. So for that, I need to assemble the bow. So I'm going to do that now. Now this bow here has quick connects on the ends. So you look at your bow limbs. You got to be sure you get the right limb in the right area. This is the bottom limb, right here. You can tell it's the bottom limb because it's got the writing on it, which marks the bottom. So this will go in here, just like this, okay? That's your bottom limb, and then you put your lock nut in, right here. 
put your lock nut in, tighten it finger tight, spin it around, do the same with the upper limb. This is the upper limb, slides in like this. We do the same thing, we'll put our lock nut in, Now we need to string the bow. Hold on a second while I string the bow. Okay, now that you have the bow strung, as you can see, you get to straighten up here and get a better picture of it, okay? We're gonna go ahead and check the knock point on this. Now your knock point should be set to start with, I would start one eighth of an inch, which is right here. One eighth of an inch above your rest, okay? So you snap this onto your bow string. Slide it down to your rest, your bare hair rest right there. And as you can see how far off that is, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another knock at the 1 8 inch mark, okay? So I take my knock. This is the knock, okay? We're gonna place it so it lines up with the 1 8 of an inch, okay? on one eighth of an inch above, which is about right there. This is a starting point. I would fine tune this later, okay? But as you can see, if you look close, that is set one, this is your top of your bow over here. This is the top, okay? This is the top of the bow, okay? Top, bottom, you want to set one eighth of an inch above. So you see the knock is now at the one eighth inch mark, okay? So, go ahead and take your pliers and you want to crimp it right there. Okay, good. Then you pull this off. Now I like to take it around. I like to run around and double crimp it just to make sure it stays good and tight. Okay. All right. There. Nice and tight. Okay, now I'm going to take this one off, okay? Okay, what I did is I took that one off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it down now and put it on top of this one so my knock doesn't slide on me, okay? This will be a starting point. I will adjust this as I tune the bow. But now that put a little knock on top because that way the arrow won't slide on it. Just double check my settings. Put this knot back on there. Slide it down. And as you can see, I'm at one eighth of an inch mark where I need to be at, okay? Now, that's complete. That's how that's, the bare hair rest is changed out now, okay? Good, all right, now, now we're gonna put these, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install these limb silencers, limb protectors, limb silencers. These are real simple to put on. They just basically peel and stick. So let's do that right now. First, I have to take the string off the bow. And we can work on the limbs now and put these limb protectors on, which are right here, these limb protectors. Okay, this is the top of the limb. Let's go ahead and take these out. All right, let's pull these out of here. These will keep that silence of the string from popping the limb at the top and make it much quieter. These work better in standard silence rather it doesn't slow down your string. Like a big puffy ball silence will slow your string down five to 10 feet per second. Especially on a recurve, you only shoot about 180 to 190. That five to 10 can make a big difference in penetration. So I like to use these because these will take, they'll take away any of the speed from the string and makes you just as quiet. Okay, this is real simple to do the same thing. We take our denatured alcohol Again, test a small spot in the limb first to make sure it won't leave a mark, as I did there. And then once you verify it's not gonna leave a mark, you can go ahead and clean the limb. So I clean the limb all on the top right there with it, as you can see here, okay? I'll do the same with the bottom limb. Take it and clean that off real good right there. That way it'll stick really well, okay? Now I'll move this out of the way. Okay, now. 
as that is done, I'm done with my denatured alcohol, I'll put it up. Okay, now, it takes a few seconds to dry. Once it dries, you won't see any shiny spots like you do now, it's clean. So what I would do now is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna peel it off, first I'm gonna test fit it. Let's test fit it first. I wanna test fit this where this is gonna go. I try to see that little string notch there. I try to put it right along that string notch right there to the top edge. That way when it hits, it pops right there, okay? Some people go all the way up to the top. I don't like to do that. Just take just to the top of that string edge, which is right there. I put it right to the top of that string edge. So you see that string guide right there? I put it right to the top of that, okay? If you put it down here, it doesn't really do anything for you. It's got to be out where the string is going to pop it when it hits. So I keep it right about there, okay, on it. All right. Peel it off just like that. You got a nice clean backing. Turn your bow over. Okay. And I come over here and I attach it right to that edge of that string stop. Just like that. See that? Now what that is, is at the very top of that string guide, it'll actually cut a crease in there and work its way in over time. Make it a lot quieter, okay? Do the same on the other side now. Okay. Again, there's your string guide right there. As you can see, that's your string guide. We're going to go right to the top of that string guide, okay? The well, best way I find it, I take my that little corner, that notch right there, and I put it right in the edge of the string guide, put my finger on it, then I, what I do is I hold up my thumb and forefinger, and then I stretch it by eyeball, I make sure it's straight all the way across so it's even all the way. It's very important that it stays even all the way. And then apply it nice and tight, just like that. And that's all there is to that. And then once you put your string on it, when your string releases and pops out, it's going to be super quiet. Okay. That is that now. All right, this is one of many um, archery how-tos I'm going to be showing you how to do in this in this series of, on my on my site. I look forward to working more with you guys, and I got some more projects ahead. Like I said, we're going to be doing some arrows next, and we're going to be cresting them, building them, tipping them. We're also going to be showing you how to sharpen a broadhead the correct way. We'll be, that'll be coming up soon, and of course, I got some more MRE reviews as well. So again, thank you for watching. If you like what you like, if you like what you see, please um, click that like button for me, and be sure to leave me a comment down at the bottom there. If you have any questions or comments, I would like to read them, and I will answer any that I can. Also, click that bell next to the subscribe. That way, every time I have a new video, I'll pop in. You'll be notified. And I look forward to having more videos for you in the future. And I thank you for your time. Thank you for watching my channel, and thank you very much for your support. Have a wonderful day, and we'll speak to you again soon. Bye now.